Hi everyone and welcome to episode number 18 of the Witch Doctor's Guide to Service Now. Today we're going to take a uh, kind of a different look and we're going to take a look of two different methods you're going to be able to use when you do live record calls or creating new records through scripts. We're going to take a look about something called initialize and that one called new record and what's the difference between these. And of course my PowerPoint doesn't do what I want. There we go. My name is Goran Lundqvist, aka the Witch Doctor. Uh, been here for quite a while, so hopefully you've seen my other videos. But for those who have seen this for the first time, or any of my videos for the first time, I've been playing around with ServiceNow for now five years, something like that. Everything from technical stuff to processes, architecture, developers. Also been teaching a few ServiceNow fundamental classes as well. Been a customer, working at the moment as a partner, and um, going to join a service now at the 1st of April this year. So, being at all the different places you can be when it comes to service now, soon at least, since I'm still a, a partner. Love playing around in the community, helping people out, of course, making videos like this, answering uh, three times service now in the P. Sadly, I doubt I can get a fourth since uh, ServiceNow doesn't allow employees to become MVPs. Also written a book called The Wish Doctor's Guide to ServiceNow. I will show a little bit more about that. If you'd like to connect, hit me on uh, LinkedIn, Twitter, YouTube and follow and we'll just uh, chat and we can talk about anything. And I'll try to help you out if I can. The book of course if you'd like to take a look at it, it's on Amazon, just search for ServiceNow and you will find it. Just put in a, a few bullet points here what it will include. Pretty much my knowledge, or at least some of it that I have learned during these years and the stuff that I wish that I knew when I started. I put them down and try to, to share it with you guys so you can stop doing the same mistakes I did. But enough about that, we have a really huge agenda for this. A video um, of course we got to look what is the difference and what I thought was the difference earlier for at least for a couple of months half a year ago turns out that it wasn't really what I thought it was because when I thought we have two ways of making a, a new record in script either use initialize or new record and I always thought that if I use initialize it would skip the default values. It will just save the records and use the values that I put in. If there are other fields with default values, it will skip them. But new record will not do that. That was what I thought. But that's not true. When you actually save it, both these functions will use the default values if you haven't set any of them. But let's skip the PowerPoint and let's take a look <coughs> of the different ways you can actually do it. So let's go to script background to see what we actually get. And I have actually prepared some coding here. So the first thing you can do is of course, let me zoom in one more, just write var record equals new glide record incident and we're done. And then basically here you can write record.insert to actually save this record. Uh, what we want to see here is, of course, before I do the insert, do these actually have any values? The different fields that exist on the instant table. Then, just for fun, let's see if the function is new record, is that returning true or false? And let's just go to my instant list, we'll just hit refresh. You can see that at the moment we are not on 11 because I've been playing around. Uh, and but let's save this one so you can see that before I actually saved all these fields was undefined it didn't know does it exist or nothing no value at all the check for is it a new record returned false saying no this is not a new record which is not correct uh, if you're going to use that functionality you probably want it to return true I guess but if we go to our instant list, we can see that it has been created and you can see that 
I have actually put in a default value on short description just to show you that it actually put that one. <coughs> you can also see that the state is new, which is the default author box uh, and so on. So if you don't use initialize and you don't use um, new record, it's possible to just do it like this. Uh, I would recommend not doing it like this because using initialize or new record, you're actually telling your future developers or yourself that, hey, we are going to create a new record here. In this case, we have no clue what we're going to do until we see the insert. And of course, this function as well will return false, which is not so good if you would like to do that check. So the next thing we're going to look at is initialize. I'm just going to steal the next couple of lines. Pretty much the same thing, but now we have added this line, initialize. Here we just debug the same fields and check if it's a, if it's a new record. And as you can see, now we have number 20. If I hit run, you can see that active is false because it needs to have some of the values. These fields are actually empty. They're just prepared to, to put in stuff. And this is kind of, I don't, can I actually not explain this one, why it's a zero. Uh, if it, it's beyond my knowledge of, of coding, uh, because there is actually, it's not the default value and there isn't any value that is, um, is zero even. And if you take a look at it, my guessing is that the, the mult, since it's a choice table, it's not an integer either, since the values can actually be characters like A, B, C, or whatever as well. So I have no clue, but as you can see, it doesn't use the, the values. But if I run the code a couple of times, <coughs> and then I'll do an insert. You can see that it has created one, and if I go to a list, it should get 21. That, that's kind of cool. And it still gets, and here you can see, it actually gets default values, unless I have, of course, in my code, done something like this, record init dot If I do it like that, it will of course override the default value uh, and have that as a short description instead. But still you can say it says, no, this is not a new record, which it actually is, which is kind of weird. Let me go back and see that this one still says that, no, no, it's not a new record because it's not using the new record functionality. But still, it prepares, by doing this, it actually prepares a record and open and creates the object at least with all the different uh, fields. Now for the last one, the new record. Let me just, uh, I'll do like that. kind of lazy, I guess. So now we're using the new record functionality and let's run a script. And before I run it, let's see, I am on number 22 at the moment. So running this, you can see that it actually pre-fills all the fields with the default values as well. Active is true, I even got the number, uh, open that date, I even got the sysid and the state is one. And here you can see each new record is actually saying true. This is actually working. Now you can see 23, if I go back and run 24, 
25. You can see this one is actually still, unless you have uh, changed the configuration, this is actually stealing a number each time I'm running it, even if I don't insert it. So you can say that this one is pretty much exactly the same as if you would go to incident and hit create new. Since create new steals and pre-fills, as you can see, the different values, and it actually even gets a CCD and so on as well. But unless I hit save or submit, it won't be saved into that one. So new record is actually working the same way as if you were using a form and trying to create a new insert in this case. But I got all the information and <coughs> What's kind of nice is if you go, what confused me a little bit if, if you look at the, the documentation. So I went to developers, API and server, and then I went into the glide record. If, if I go down to initialize, and here you can see basically what we found out, creates an empty record suitable for population before insert, because it doesn't have any values. And then inserts, insert a new record using the field values that has been set for the kernel. And this one is what threw me off a little bit because my interpretation of this one is that it doesn't use the, the default values, but it does when you do the insert, that, which is good to know. And then we have the new record here, of course. And uh, In this case, it says create a new record, sets the default values and assigns a unique ID for the record. And here you can see as well, it will actually return true, just like I showed you as well. So of course, then comes the question is when are we using which thing? Uh, let me just do like this. We can show all of them at the same time. Do they fit? Not really. And it's hard to read. I actually think I'm going to do like this instead. So can I zoom? Can't I zoom on this one? Not the normal zoom. Hmm, let me just give it a... I guess the Visual Studio co code is the, not my uh, normal place to be. Come on. No zoom. Well, let's skip that one and let's go through them one by one. So we have the first one, which is not using initialize or new record. It in practice works the same way as initialize, but when reading through code, I wouldn't recommend uh, using it like that. Use initialize at least to make sure to show the people reading the code that you are actually going to create a new record here. Because who knows, 50 lines further down, you might starting to add queries to that variable instead of actually creating one. So it's a good way of showing you that this is the time I'm going to create a new record. Uh, and then we have left, we have initialize, and we have new record. So when should I use one another? And it doesn't really matter most of the time. Uh, <coughs> of course, new record will steal a uh, a number uh, doesn't perhaps matter so many times because often when you are actually defining that you are going to create a new record, you are going to create one. You, you won't further down say, oh, let's keep creating one because normally have already decided that you wanted to create one. But that is one thing to think about. Uh, looking at the code in service now, most of the time initialize is the thing that we are using. I think there were a check when you look at business rule, for example, I think in 138 was initialized, like 40 was using new records. Uh, I have actually came up with one user criteria where I actually needed to use the new record. Uh, in this case, I had uh, creating a custom field, um, or a custom table actually, which was kind of a middle layer of handling tasks and when I decided to create a task I actually wanted that one to be set a create a date that was back when the other task was created 
So think of it like, uh, for example, incident and incident task. When I created the incident task, I wanted to create a time to be when the incident was created. And this was basically one of the reasons was that the SLA triggered when the task was inserted and they wanted the SLA to actually start at the date when the incident was created. So this means that I needed to fetch the incident's created date before I created the task and set that value because after the task was created, the SLA has already, already been triggered. So I needed to do a before business rule in this case and to do that, I needed to know the sysid of that new one because <laughs> now I'm getting really involved because I needed to, to match. When I created a task, I filled in a field on the incident saying this is the incident that I'm actually building. And then to be able to go back before I create a task, I needed to find the incident which it came from. And then if I hadn't had the sysid by new record, I couldn't have pre-filled the sysid on the incident. Does that make sense? Probably, I hope it does for you. But in this case it is, do I really need to get the hold of the information in the record before it's being saved and use it somewhere else? Perhaps creating relationships and, and so on? Then use the new record because then you get the sysid before you actually save the record and can do stuff before it's being saved. That is the biggest reason for using a uh, new record. Uh, <coughs> and of course the number if you would like to do that as well. Uh, I wouldn't say the other fields the default value because you know what they're going to be, but you don't know what the sys ID is going to be. And normally when you do code, you get the sys ID when you do insert, like, uh, like this for example. If I were going to use initialize, Remove all of that. Record in it dot. <sighs> so we have, I'm pointing at the screen, that's really good. <laughs> uh, so I got sysid here, you know that's going to be an empty, but if I do gs.debug, or even like this, var, not car, <laughs> var my sys id equals insert because when I do this function it returns the sysid debug sysid of new record plus my sysid like that now I got the sysid but that is after the record has been saved in the table. So if you need it before because you need to do anything or use the is new record functionality, use the, the new uh, new record functionality. Then of course you can say why not always use new record. Might as well do that as well since the, <coughs> the initialize will override and if you're using new record and you set a value on the field of course that will override the default values as well so to be on the safe side you can always use new record so just a, a couple of thoughts and hopefully clear up if you have the same questions I had earlier about the difference when should I use what and if you have anything else just post a comment and it will get right back to you and see if I can answer it. Besides that, hope you had a great weekend and see you later.